welcome everybody to another edition of Faith Greater Than Fear. My name is Mike Schrage. I get to serve over here at GMPI, Good News Productions International. The office is in Joplin, Missouri. And we are having a real opportunity during this COVID season to talk to people of faith. And we are getting to talk to people that are in our office and in our community, in our nation, and even some cases around the world. Today, it's a real honor to have a real friend and a real colleague from our own city here in Joplin, Dr. Carl Went with us. Carl, welcome. Hey, Mike. Thank you so much. I love that you're doing this, and thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about, as our audience listens to you, what should they know about Carl Went? Oh, man. Uh, well, family guy, kind of like you, uh, family man, got a uh, wife, two daughters. They're grown, they're successful and uh, doing really well. One's going to get married this summer. That's going to be exciting. Um, the other daughter just moved to town. So that's all that's kind of, it's a fun season of life. No grandkids yet. So I, I'm looking forward to that next season of life. Uh, married for a few years uh, to my amazing wife, Shannon. Um, I, do you want to talk ministry? Do you want to talk personal? What do you, I mean, uh, I like to have fun and I like to work hard. I like to do both. Well, our wives have worked together. You and I have done things together. And for our audience to know, Carl has been the wonderful, fabulous actor voice in English for a project called the global gospel that has really moved across the planet in lots of great ways and uh it's in 40 languages now carl i don't know if you knew that oh that's so. fantastic that was such a fun and fulfilling project to try and grasp uh some of those bible stories and and put them uh into video it was just very exciting i'm proud to be a part of it Great. So talk a little bit about, yeah, the professional I listed, you know, to you the other day about four professions. I mean, you're, you're an actor and I think professionally, I personally, I know you do it more as a hobby, but voice actor and acting teacher, professor, counselor, unpack those three or four for us just to get to know you on that, that realm. Uh, Full-time right now, I'm working with Harding University and I teach graduate classes in Rogers uh, we've got a branch campus there. The main campus is in Searcy, Arkansas. But what a what a privilege that is. So I'm helping prepare professional counselors uh, to go out into the field to make a difference. And boy, are they needed now uh, more than any time. Um, so that's that's Harding uh, at Mount Hope Church. I run the Mount Hope uh, Christian Counseling Center. I've got several fantastic colleagues there in a little house that used to be Brad Pitt's grandmother's house. And uh, that little house on the church property has been turned into a wonderful uh, springboard of ministry for families. And so we've got counselors there almost every hour, every day, um, two little offices, but man, we keep it hopping. And we've got six different counselors that share those spaces and uh, a lot of good stuff going on there. So I love that and lead worship at the church and do some family life kind of fun stuff, uh, Apple night and uh, holiday dinners and, and just some stuff that's for fun. That's maybe the acting side. The acting is for, is mostly just for fun, but I love it when that intersects with ministry. Uh, and way back in the day, I got to travel for about a year, travel the country with a group called His Players, His Players. And we did uh, Christian drama in churches and schools and community centers around the country and uh, North America, the, the rest of North America. It was just an amazing opportunity. We had a twofold policy. We said we never asked for money and we never turned it down. And with that policy, uh, we just barely made a living and scraped by for a year and it was amazing. That was a blast. So when, when, uh, when theater and ministry intersect, I love that. But right now we do, my wife and I do projects with Stone's Throw, Stained Glass, Joplin Little Theater, and Shannon's the primary director at Ozark Christian College right now and directed Elf the Musical last Christmas. And we're so sad we can't right now, but that's a lot. That's, that's fun for us. 
Good. Well, tell us a little bit about what Carl or Carl and Shannon are learning this season of the unusual uh, COVID pandemic that we're having. And then I'm going to, after that, unpack what you said about, boy, do we need more counseling capacity in our churches and in our communities and how you're being used by God to build that repertoire of people and capacity as you are a professor there. So first, the personal side, what are you, what's God teaching you? And then secondly, how are you transforming that into your, to your students? That's a great, great question. And I think all of us, um, we want to learn from the exciting, fun, happy uh, success times, but in our lives so often we learn from the struggle, challenge, things aren't going great times. And, and these times of COVID have been uh, an amazing learning curve for all of us. I think one of the messages that a lot of us are getting is slow down. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, in this pace of uh, the American pace is, is not in sync with a lot of other countries in the world because we just run, we just blaze. Uh, even through our fun things, we blaze through that while we're looking at our phone, you know, and, uh, and so we've got, we're spinning so many plates and we're doing so many things, which, um, which is an intriguing part of my life in, in both a good and a bad way. So, you know, doing the different projects, part of that just energizes me. Uh, and part when, when I let that work, uh, I, I let myself have margin in between pieces. And I think COVID is one of the messages it's teaching a lot of us is just, uh, you don't have to blaze all the time. And everybody had to stay home for a while. And, you know, there's a blessing and a curse. And those that that hit financially, that had a whole different struggle. But there were, there were people that weren't hit financially. They were home. And, uh, you know, wh what do you do? You just play on your phone all day? Or do you get down on the floor and play a board game with your kids? You know, and so suddenly people are realizing the value and the beauty of slowing down a little and looking other people in the eye and valuing that contact when, when you can. And I guess that would be my second message um, would be, uh, well, should I pause just for a second and I'll go on to my second one. You want to make a roll, keep going. Okay. Second one I think is to be connected. Um, I think it's a, it's a misnomer. We know what it means, but people say we need to practice social distancing. We don't need to practice social distancing. We need to practice physical distancing. So we need to be six foot. And, and if it's appropriate to be wearing a mask, you wear a mask. You, you follow all those protocols. But actually, uh, because of Facebook and because of Zoom and phones, and there are so many ways to stay connected socially. So And we, we hunger for that. We need that. And people that really haven't been able to go back to church yet, a lot are watching church online, and that scratches a niche, but uh, it's that does uh, is at its best when you've got a little chat line up to the side and people are typing something in saying, hi, Fred, good to see you. And somebody's saying, oh, good to see you too, because you need that. You need that piece. And so if you're not getting that, if you're just watching a screen, then you need to make contact afterward and call somebody and talk about the sermon, uh, or you need to Zoom with your two best friends and let's talk about what we're gonna do a couple months from now, if it's okay, it, we just need that. So we're hungering for, I think our, our world has been hungering for slowing down for a long time, but right now we know how much we need to stay invested in being connected. Mm. Yeah, good. Good words. I, thinking of a local minister, and I won't mention his name. You would know him. One time in his younger days, he was speaking. And it was a Sunday morning, running late. Kids in the back seat of the car, having to get off to the building. There's a man on the side of the road with a flat tire, and the daughter says in the back seat, "Daddy, Daddy, so what's wrong there?" And he says, "Oh, he's got something wrong with his car." And she says this very touching set of words. Well, I hope somebody that's not busy going to church has time to stop and help him. <laughs> oh, oh, ouch. oh, that's kind of what you're telling us that the spirit of God is trying to do in redeeming 
some of our relationship capacity by slowing down, by taking a breath, by taking a pause and hearing and caring for other people and being creative. If we're gonna have some things through technology online, please pick up the phone, do the text, do the interact, do something else because you're so right. It cannot be about the social distancing. We are not human doings, we're human beings. We be. Uh, in the space with other people. We need that. That's why isolation is such a terrible thing to have as a prisoner. I mean, it, it's it's brutal on us. And, and you and I need that and we know it and, and we're invested in that. And what we've got to do is find ways to get the people that are not creative enough to find, maybe don't have internet or they don't have a, uh, a really fancy phone and so where are those people that have been accidentally marginalized? And mm -hmm. our church has a commitment. Each of the elders has a, a list of people uh, that they call every week and just try to stay connected. And some of them say like, oh, you're calling again, you know, but then some of them hunger for that. Mm -hmm. And it's just, that's the moment. Uh, and you just kind of find those needs and find ways to fill them. So what about, as we pivot here a minute, Carl, how should we as people of faith, what is our role that God, that we could be shining stars like Paul talks about, that we as Christians, as followers can be shining stars in this moment? What do you think that we as, as our episodes are, you know, faith greater than fear, you're seeing a lot of fear probably and hearing it in their voices. What are you and your lovely wife, what are we supposed to do to be those shining stars in our community here in Joplin and around the four state area and wherever our listeners are? I think there's things that that everyone can do and then there are things strategically like uh the uh christian leaders and mental health um uh, helpers can do on a kind of a different level but i'll speak first i think something that we all can do one is to do enough taking care of yourself that you've still got something to give every day and uh and so making sure that you're doing the things that you need to do that's kind of uh, giving yourself a, a gut check, watching your own gauges. Uh, if your engine starts running hot, and if you let that engine blow, you're not gonna get anybody in the car anywhere. Um, and, uh, and so you wanna make sure that you're watching your gauges so that you can continue investing in other people. Um, one thing I think that people of faith in general can do is, is to lean on their own faith and not be afraid to share um, in a in a pleasant way about that, about what that's doing for them, you know, what a difference it makes um, to know that um, that I've got uh, my faith to lean on. Just what a difference that what what a difference it makes to have Jesus, and it doesn't have to be preachy. It can just be just a tiny little one sentence. Say, oh, uh, I know things are going to be okay because I know who's in charge, mm -hmm. and just a little statement like that just kind of kind of gets us there's a sink it, everything falls back into place and so we've got to lean into trusting and not be afraid in just tiny little uh uh happy ways to share that with other people i think there's so much doom and gloom most of the talk about the the election is all doom and gloom from all sides from all and i've got enough ears in different places hearing different people right and left and everybody's the sky is falling um, and the same thing with COVID is just easy to focus in on the things not going right. One of the things I encourage uh, is for people to go ahead and focus on the things that need different and the things that need changed and the things that are frustrating because that's, there's something really healthy about that. That's how you grow. That's how we make changes. Uh, but to always balance that with a minimum, with a 50% looking on a bright side. In other words, uh, kind of the Paul said, think on these things, things that are true and noble and right. And uh, these are, I need to sometimes discipline myself. He used, um, he used command language there. Think on these things. Sometimes you have to make yourself think on these things, not to the exclusion of, I'm never going to think a negative thought. No, I think there's something good about that. But uh, that said, what I need to do is if I catch myself 80, 90% of the time thinking about, oh, things are falling apart. Oh, everything's going, uh, gonna, everything's being messed up. Then there's something way out of balance. And if I can focus on some of the things that are going right, whether uh, that's in my family, focus on some of the things that are going right. 
some of the things my spouse is doing right, mm -hmm. some of the things my church is doing right, some of the things that are going okay in my life. Uh, and if I will give myself the discipline to give at least equal time, 51%, that'd be, that'd be maybe even better to give 60% to thinking positively. But I think it, uh, way too often, it, it turns into the balance the other direction. Good, good words. And so as we sort of wrap this up, what, besides the slowing down, being connected, thinking more on the positive, yes, we have the negative and we need to continue to address that and, and grow. I like that idea. Yeah, we, we want to be always growing. I always think about, you know, the grandma who said, I didn't miss a day at church in Sunday school in 45 years. And going, yeah, and how many people in those 45 did you bring to Jesus? Just because we are consistent doesn't mean that we are good at growing into being a better and more effective disciple. So mm -hmm. he's got us on the anvil during the season. He's changing us. You're just multiplying yourself in great ways. What would you in closing say, hey, people of faith, hey, audience, this is what I'd like to leave you as my parting blessing for you or word of wisdom. Um one of our elders uh, works with the Republican Party, and so he's uh, he helps coordinate some of their efforts in this area. And he was sharing with the church uh, the other night and said that he had done gotten on his computer and actually done a district by district look at all the voting patterns uh, in a couple of the key states. Uh, and he was uh, really, really looking at all of exactly where everything was. And he said, I can after doing all the tabulation, I can be reasonably sure that by Saturday night, Jesus will still be the Lord of the universe. And I thought, okay, that's good. That's good. Go ahead and do your homework. Go ahead and work on things. Go ahead and try to make it better. But remember who's in charge and remember to be refreshed by him. Good. Dr. Carl Wendt. Friend Carl Wendt, thank you so much for a little bit of your valuable time. We appreciate you. Send our greetings to your lovely wife as well. Blessings in what you do in leading and teaching and just making life enjoyable with people around you. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity and thanks for doing this. This is very needed. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So from Carl and myself, thank all of you for tuning in. If what Carl has said has in some way ministered to you, please don't hog it. Share it with somebody else on your social media channels. There is a podcast version of it as well. And so we just thank you, wishing you a great day. And until next time, may indeed your faith be greater than your fear. God's blessings to you. Bye-bye.